Hey y'all, during this class, we're gonna be using models a lot. Models are representations of things, of objects or phenomena that happen in the real world. And they help us break down systems and understand those systems a little bit more. See, I can't go to a volcano and jump in to understand how it works, but we can take a look at models to help us understand how volcanoes erupt. We can't jump into the earth and really see what causes an earthquake. But what we can is we can make models, computer simulations, etc., to help us understand why earthquakes happen and how they affect people. Um, this globe right here, this is a model. This is a model of the earth. It helps us study the whole thing as a system. This rock, this rock right here is a model. Well, it's a real rock, but we can also study the smaller properties of the rock and understand how the rock formed and where it came from and the processes that formed this rock. Models also help us break down things that are either too big or too small for us to really see or observe, or maybe they happen over too long of a period of time or too short of a period of time. And these scales, these large scale and these small scale models, they help us break down things that are really big and help us see them in a more tangible way. They also help us take things that are really small, like the stuff that makes up the air, and break them down and understand it a little bit better. See, the important thing about models is they help us analyze systems not only parts of a system, but the interactions between systems. And they help us break those systems down so we can understand changes in those systems and the interactions between them. And understanding models allows us to predict what may happen in the future or what might have happened in the past. So here's another model right here. It's a pot of boiling water. And this pot of boiling water is an example of a model that's showing us a system of matter and energy. See, there's a flame down here and that flame is heating up the uh, is heating up the water inside the pot, and then that water, the matter inside there, is absorbing the heat. And there's something that's going on. The water's evaporating off. Now it may be tough to see, so I'm gonna take this glass, and we can see that it's fogging up really easily. Why? That's the matter that's coming out of that pot of boiling water. There's evaporation happening. We have absorbing heat, and then we have matter being released from that system. Well, this little simple model right here can help us understand the processes that goes into energy transfer and phase changes and other processes. So throughout this class, we're gonna be making a lot of models. Now, sometimes we're gonna be doing stuff like this. Sometimes I'm gonna ask you to make a drawing. Sometimes I'm gonna ask you to find some supplies at home or back in school. We can go ahead and find supplies there to model things that happen within the earth. But no matter how we try to model something, we always have to remember the goal. Models help us understand systems, they help us understand processes, they help us understand why phenomenon is happening. So here I can use my refrigerator as another model to demonstrate systems of matter and energy. Take a look. So I open up the fridge here and we know that everything in the fridge is cold. Right? Take my word for it, the stuff is cold. But what we have to do is we have to ask, why is it cold? You see, I can put something warm into this fridge and then just a little bit later it gets cold. Why? Is it absorbing cold? Is it releasing heat? Well, we can use the model and break it down to help us understand the processes that are happening within this system. Now, I'm not sure if you caught it, but I actually just used a whole bunch of vocabulary that I want to break down for you guys. I use words like energy and matter, and I used absorbing heat and releasing heat. I used the word evaporation and condensation earlier with the pot of boiling water. Let's go ahead and break those words down. So we already talked about what models are. The representations, the representations of objects or processes or phenomenon that happens. And there are different kinds of models. A computer simulation is a model, a drawing is a model. You can make a physical model of something. Some other words that we talked about. I mentioned the word energy. And energy is the ability to do work. It takes energy to move a table or a chair or something. But we can also use the word energy to talk about heat. Another energy term is radiant energy. And that's energy from light, whether it be like a heat lamp or from the sun. Now, earlier when we saw the pot of boiling water, we were looking at a phase change. And phase change is when you take matter and it transforms from one state to another. And what I mean is that it can go from a liquid to a gas, or maybe you could take that liquid and freeze it and turn it into ice. Basically, it's going from like a solid to a liquid to a gas or backwards from a gas back down to a liquid and then into a solid. That's what a phase change is. These phase changes happen because of processes. You can take a piece of ice and melt it. And melting is a process. That's when you go from solid into a liquid. Or if you added more heat into that system, you can evaporate it. And that's what we saw going on in the stove. That's another process where you continue to add heat or energy. And then you go from a liquid into a gas. 
then you can take that gas and you can cool it down and it can go back into a liquid and that's called condensation. Evaporation is when you go from a liquid to a gas and condensation is the reverse. That's when you go from a gas back down to a liquid. And then when you already know what freezing is, that's when you can take that liquid and turn it into a solid. Now, all these processes of melting and freezing, evaporation and condensation, they all involve either absorbing heat, which means it's taking in heat, or releasing heat, which means it's giving it off. Now, there's a really important concept here. There's no such thing as cold energy. When I was showing you my fridge earlier, I used that term cold energy. There is no such thing as cold energy. Things either get hot or cold because they either absorb heat, which would make a system warmer, or they could release heat, which would make it cooler. As we build models moving forward, you're going to hear the vocab words that we just went through come up over and over again.